I'm excited tonight to be joined um, to be joined by Thomas Frank, the author of the book, Listen Liberal, or Whatever Happened to the Party of the People. Um, I am a fan of his. I have the first book I think I've read of his was what's the matter in Kansas or with Kansas. Um, and it started unpacking how the, um, you know, a lot of Republicans vote against their best uh, economic interest. And he unpacked the reasons why. And I was excited to get this book because, um, the analysis, the level of analysis he did with the Republican party, he turned around and now did with the democratic party. And it was just, it was, it was meat and manna for me because I was really thinking about some thinking about some of these things at the same time that the book came out. And it's always good to be able to read someone who's put things into context uh, that you've been thinking about. Uh, and so um, we're connecting, trying to connect with them now, uh, just trying to get video connected. And as soon as we get the video connected, we'll uh, bring him on. Um, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Mr. Frank, how are you today? I am good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for joining me. My audience is excited about um, as, about this conversation. We want to talk briefly um, about your book, and then I want to actually bring it to life and put it in the context of this election because there's so many things happening um, <laughs> to the Democratic Party right before our eyes. So um, let's just start with a real quick uh, softball. Um, why did you write the book? What, what compelled you to write this book? Listen, liberal. Yeah, listen, liberal. Well, you know, uh, you 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 were talking about what's the matter with Kansas a second ago, and I have written uh, three books about the conservatives, you know, the Republican Party and the conservative movement. But when you you know you look at the broad sweep of, of where we are, and and you can't blame everything on them. There's yes. you know it's yes. a two it's a two party system. And uh, there's this, you know, this other half of the world that that I that I hadn't, uh, you know, that I hadn't been writing about. But uh, it also, you know, it's also the challenge of the thing. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to be, uh, if you're, in my opinion, if you're going to be an honest commentator, uh, you have to take on the subjects that are hard as well yeah. as the subjects that are easy. And uh, writing about the conservatives. You know, this is like, it's like making fun of Trump. Like it's too, it's too easy right now. Yeah. Um, you know? <laughs> no, absolutely. I, I agree. It, it, I was reading somewhere on Facebook. Um, um, there was one particular scholar who said the reason she won't even give Donald Trump uh, any of her intellectual space, brain space, is because of exactly what you said. Why it's just too easy. So, so part it's, of this it's too easy, and it, it makes you feel stupid just in, just in, even engaging you now. <laughs> It does. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> it, there's like there's it's it's obvious, right? The things about Trump is obvious. But I like what you said, though, that, you know, because this is the same space I was in. I was in the same mental space, I would say, about 2006, 2007, where I could clearly see the shift in American politics towards the right. And I can see the 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 part of the conservative movement that was causing it. But then later on, I would say around 2000. Eight, really 2008 when I saw uh, President Obama pick Timothy Geithner and and I saw everything yes. happening with the bailout I was like wait a minute hold on something else is afoot here and so for you you're yeah. saying that you spotted that and you dug into it and you discovered or you just real re realized that this is an intentional shift towards the right by the corporate ring of the Democratic Party um, to embrace policies that are uh, more beneficial for corporate America versus the average American. Just unpack the basics. Yes, absolutely. There. Well, that's the that's you know that's the big subject, and you I know you've 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 spoken about it so many times. But the um, for me, Obama's election was a big uh, turning point in all sorts of ways. I was very enthusiastic about it. Did I? Did I? I, I don't think I've ever talked to you about this before. I don't think I've ever talked to you. Period. Before. Yeah, that's our first. <laughs> but I, I used to I used to live in Hyde Park, which is this neighborhood in Chicago. In fact, that's where I wrote "What's the Matter with Kansas," mm -hmm. and he was our state senator, mm -hmm. Barack Obama. And uh, I once met him at a house party. You know, you'd see him at uh, community gatherings and everything. And I was, I was a big fan. I thought he was a, I thought he was a great man. Mm -hmm. I still do to a certain degree. You know, I still, I still think he's. You know, I want to. I, we'll, we'll get to that later. That mm -hmm. I, I have, I have mixed, mixed feelings about him now because you know I want him to be a great president. But uh, you know, well, 
okay. So anyhow, he he, he comes into <laughs> office, right? And uh, and uh, uh, in in two thousand eight, and I was so excited. One of the reasons that I was most excited about voting for him. Mm-hmm. was that he signified to me the end of the grip of the Clintons on the Democratic Party and the Clinton faction on the Democratic Party, you know, the, the Democratic Leadership Council, yeah. the sort of centrist group. I was never a big fan of Bill Clinton back in the 1990s. Bill Clinton had really uh, made me angry with all the bank deregulation, mm-hmm. you know, welfare reform. Um, the uh, you know the uh, the big crime bill of '94, which at the time you know nobody even talked about, but it just it infuriated me. And so Barack Obama looked to me in 2008 like this was the chance to finally break the grip of that faction on the Democratic Party, and he gets elected. And it's a wonderful thing, and he looks like exactly the right man for the moment. He looks right. like the Franklin Roosevelt of our time, you know, steps into office at the moment when the country needs him most, you know, in the middle of this terrible financial crisis. And what does he do? Who does he bring in with him? I just couldn't believe it. Yeah. It's the same, but it's the same people, you know. It's 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 Larry Summers. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Clinton's old Treasury Secretary. You know, he brings in all of these Robert Rubin proteges. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he brings in Tim Geithner, as you mentioned. You just go right, to, and of course Hillary herself. You go right down the list, and and it's like it's it's he capitulated completely to this to this to this uh, faction that I thought he had uh, been elected to. Uh, you know, to toss them out, but it but it's it's worse than that because then he proceeded to do. To never really do what the country or what people like me anyway expected him to do, to get get tough with Wall Street, you know, to uh, take the opportunity presented by the bailouts, by the recession, to really, um, really transform the economy of this country. And he had the power to do it. The country was at his back. You know, a million people on the mall here in Washington for his yeah. inauguration. Yeah. The man was beloved. He had a majority in both houses of Congress, and it was just. Uh, and so the, that's really the beginning of the book is when I ask that question: What happened with this guy? Mm-hmm. You know, history dealt him four aces. How did he come away with so little? You know, that's the question that I ask. And uh, and and then the rest of the book is me trying to answer. You know, grappling with that problem and trying to answer, uh, trying to answer the question.